Hello everyone, and welcome back to Shanka Show, stories about life in the Soviet Union. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи, в эфире программа о Шанка Шоу. As you may guess, today's video is another chapter, another review of the book Black on Red, My 44 Years Inside the Soviet Union by Robert Robinson. As I keep on repeating, this is one of the best books, one of the best personal accounts of life in the Soviet Union from 1930s all the way to 1970s. And of course, what makes this book super special, it's the account of African-American engineer who came from the United States in early 1930s and worked through the Stalin era, Great Patriotic War, through Khrushchev era. So his account is just outstanding. Strongly recommend this book. Or you can just watch my videos where I make a review of this book. This video already number 12 and I have a separate playlist on my channel where all those videos are located. I'll provide the link below in the comment section. So we're in chapter 21 in July of 1945, right in the end of the Great Patriotic War. And it's the chapter calls Attempts to Leave. So this is where Robert Robertson experienced what we called in Russian Vhod Rubel a Vihad Dva. So entry price is one ruble, but exit price is two rubles. So it's always easier to get into the Soviet Union. It's way harder to get out. So Mr. Robertson writes, Two months after the Germans surrendered in July of 1945, I filed for permission to visit my mother. She was getting older and I longed to see her and my brother. Now that the war was over, for the first time in years, I could think about more than just my daily survival. I knew that I wanted out, and with the war over, I decided to begin my quest. The country and the system that at first had excited my curiosity and offered me a higher wage and better job opportunities than I could expect in the United States was thoroughly questionable to me now. I had been living in Russia for 16 years. I knew there was no way to cash in on the empty Soviet promise given me when I inquired about citizenship that I would not be held in the country against my will. And I need to pause here for a second because I had a similar experience, of course, in the late 80s, probably around 1989 or 1990. I had opportunity uh, to go and visit some people in Germany. And of course, you couldn't just go. I had to get papers to apply for the passport for travel abroad and one of the requirements was to get a paperwork from my place of work then I don't know any state secrets. Now at my place of work there was this old retired KGB guy who was in charge and he just was got mad at me because this young guy cocky dude wanted to go to Germany out of all the countries and he just refused to give me to sign that paper and my trip uh, fell through and I believe that was the very first time when I felt like I was a caged animal. Like I wanted to go visit people in Germany and come back and just because of this old KGB fart there was a just net. And now back to the book. So here Robert Robertson says, I sensed that with every passing year my chances of returning to America were growing dimmer. After all, the Kremlin's propaganda apparatus had hailed Robert Robinson as an oppressed black American who had found refu refugee and freedom in the Soviet Union. So he understands that before he was like a propaganda tool for the Soviet Union and now he became a liability because he got quite disillusioned in the Soviet Union life so they would prefer to keep him and never ever let him out and this is what actually happened that's why a book called 44 years in soviet union not 16 years in the soviet union here says rather than take any chances despite my clean record of having never committed any counter-revolutionary act so he already learned the soviet lingo he knew that he didn't commit any counter-revolutionary acts or criticize the soviet official the Ministry of Foreign Affairs was not taking any chances. So he was uh, rejected. His request was rejected, so he could not go and visit his mother, who was uh, getting old and getting sick. And he writes, beginning in 1945, a year never went by without my filing an application. 
in 27 attempts over 27 years, only once did I ever come close to getting permission. So get your own, there's the reality of life in the Soviet Union. A guy applied 27 years, 27 times, only once he got just close, he still couldn't leave. So when Robert finally got approved to apply for the passport for travel abroad, this is what they asked him to um, have ready. So this lady listened impassively impass and said that for my application to be reviewed, I would need to prepare an autobiography. So picture you want to go uh, to Bahamas and you need to prepare an autobiography and bring a letter of recommendation from the factory committee. So then you go to your place of work and you gather all the uh, workers and they need to sign <laughs> recommendation that you are a good worker, that you reliable American citizen in this case, or a Soviet citizen. And then you need the long six headshots uh, photos. They also required a letter from the house committee in my apartment building. So there's another recommendation letter uh, from the people that uh, tenants that took complaints and spied on everyone. So as I told you, entry is one ruble, but exit is always two rubles in Soviet Union. So after he gathered all the paperwork and sent it out, he not heard from them for almost one year when he received a letter from his brother saying that uh, my mother had died. And then, of course, he still was trying to leave, and uh, a guy in the ministry told him, you had asked for permission for an exit visa. You see, we were so busy that it uh, hadn't be possible to take up your case. Uh, perhaps now, uh, since your mother died, you changed your mind and no longer wish to go. <laughs> so, and, he, and Robert replies, well, yes, I still want to go. The officer looked at me with cold, hard eyes and asked, Are you sure you still want to go? I don't see the purpose. What a beauty. So when in June of 1956, so he first applied in 1945. In June of 1956, he finally got uh, his passport. And basically they told him he have 10 days to leave Moscow, but then it was a hitch. They never told him that uh, since there was no air travel available, he had to leave through Poland in his Germany. It required special visas for that, which took 30 days at least to obtain. So he had 10 days to leave Soviet Union with his passport, but he needed 30 days to get those special visas, so he never had a chance to leave, and he got stuck. So Robert Robertson never had a chance to see his mother alive. I believe even his brother passed away by the time he finally managed to get out in 1974. And that was a sneaky way through Africa, go on vacation, but we'll talk about it later. As I said, he experienced firsthand what was going on in the Soviet Union, how hard it was for Soviet citizens to leave a country just for a short visit. By the way, a while back I made a video called KGB said net. KGB had 11 reasons to refuse your trip abroad, which where I analyzed and classified KGB document from 1970s. They were showing statistics how many people were refused <laughs> while requesting going abroad for tourism and what were the main reasons. So I'll post the link below in the comment section as well. Well, my friends, that's all I have for today. Thank you for watching our Shanka show. Please don't forget to like this video, and we'll talk to you soon. The Sudania, goodbye. Sergey uh, wrote a book based on diaries he made when he was first in the United States, and I, as I understand, this is just volume one, right? That's true. He's going to have more, multiple volumes coming out. Well, I said, well, since uh, Sergey is kind enough to come up and speak with us, I bought the book. I said, I might as well read this. I read this in one city two hours, two and a half hours. I just couldn't put it down. It was so fascinating because. Uh, your writing is very compelling for one, and his story is very interesting for two. It's really interesting. You know, we've lived here our whole lives. We don't have that perspective. It's just so interesting to hear someone else's perspective about what we take for granted. So I hope you really tune in and, and listen to what he has to say. It's a very interesting, very informed perspective. 
Sergey is not a historian. He's an electrical engineer by trade, but I find that he has a depth of understanding on history, economics, culture. So just a, just a very observant fellow and a, a great storyteller. So uh, let's